Hey everybody and welcome on back to Building with Whip. Today we're back here in our single player world where we did a heck of a lot of building in the last episode. We've got all of this side of the street here was gone, but the start of the last episode, which was so fun. We built so many cool little pathways and things. If y'all want to be seeing how we did this one, definitely go be sure to check out that episode. We got a lovely wandering trader hanging out back here. And we've got this amazing statue. I will say, though, I'm doing a bit of pre-recording right here because the holiday season is crazy and I want to make sure I get enough videos for you all. Uh, anyway, so this sign here, I've not read the comments yet, but please be sure to let me know here on if you have any other ideas for what we can throw on the sign to represent our stag statue that we have up here or our elk. <laughs> that took me way too long to remember the word elk. Uh, but what should we do, be doing for our elk statue up here to represent like what's going on with this one? Why is this significant? Let me know what we can do. You got one sign. Fill it out in the comments below. And very quickly here, I just want to say thank you all so very much for the insane support on this series. I can't even say the word insane apparently. But anyways, thank you so very much for that. If you are still enjoying what we're doing here please be sure to hit that like button again to show me all that you want to be seeing more if we could hit that 2000 like goal yet again on this video we've been crushing it so far and that's been absolutely absolutely awesome i am tongue twistering up the wazoo today but anyways what we're going to be working on today first and foremost is i want to build up this forge similar to how the sky forge works inside of skyrim in one of the first big towns that I'm blanking on the name of where they have like a big eagle over it. I was thinking we could use the elk statue of like a different version of that of somehow over the top of the forge, like reaching out over it. I think we're going to need to make this area a little bit bigger. But on top of that, I would also like to come back over here and build up our mountains a little bit more and throw in an iron mine somehow in this vicinity and get a pathway detailed out to go all the way back over there, back into the town, so we can have the iron that's going to the forge and connecting all that stuff up. I think it's gonna be really cool. I'll tell you what, however, as we're doing a bit of pre-recording, we're actually, this thing probably is already built by now. I'm gonna be doing that over on twitch.tv slash fwhiptv, uh, where we're gonna be doing a live streaming stuff Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, as we have been. Recently got Twitch Partner, which was absolutely awesome. But anyways, that thing's already probably done. So hello, future everybody. And let's jump in here and get working on this forge here today. I have been working up here, gathering up a few things and placing down a bunch of our workstation parts that we need. And that's something that needs to be fixed while we're here, just while I'm thinking about it. Let's replace that with a stone and do another stone and do a little guy right there. And then we can do this. I'm just bordering these along as we go. And of course it's gonna be nighttime right as I'm getting ready to be recording again. But up here, I have the base of the forge done. We got a little pulley system. So I figured you could like pull this iron bar down. It would make like a little stoking thing. We don't have a way to create any bellows or not. So I figure there's some type of mechanism inside of our blast furnace because that'd be used for smelting ingots. Then over here, we got a smithing table with a bunch of tools up there. Hopefully that bug gets fixed. We got an anvil that I believe is actually facing the wrong way because we'd probably want it more like right out in here. Then our grindstone, I'm thinking I'm gonna move our grind. I know we have the anvil over there. I need to get a dunking chamber too, so I need to get some water around here somewhere. But I'm figuring all that stuff out. Next thing that I wanna be focusing on is getting our statue up here. And because we have a bunch of lava in here, I'm just gonna do this for now. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna really, really regret something that happened very, very shortly into the future. So water needs to come in here. We gotta build up the statue and then this area is probably done. Just adding in a few final little details here to this one while I've been working on it. And I think it's starting to come together. It's pretty, it's pretty cool so far. I like it. It's, I used that same head that we had come up with the statue down below, threw that one on top of here and then made the arms look like they're kind of, or the front legs, I guess that would be kind of stretching around to the side. And I think it, I think it's getting the point across. <laughs> it looks like a duck. Ah. Oh. <laughs> The, the this this block right here just looks like a duck bill. <laughs> okay, we gotta fix that one. What if we do this? Do we still look like a duck? That's a little bit better. Oh my gosh, I have a tear in my eye right now. Wow, <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. Oh, that's hilarious. I think we leave it like this for now. I really wanted to try and find a way that it would look like the lava is coming outside of the mouth, but I think like coming out from right here is probably going to be our better bet for this one. 
I need to clean up a few more things around here and just add in a few more detail bits. And I think I might get some storage or something over here. I kind of want to throw in like a brazier or something. Just to have a, another fire source up here of actual light. And I think that could be pretty cool. Similar to the ones we had made up there. So I just got a few detail bits to work out on this. And then it'll actually be done. What would you call it? I know there's like the jackalope, which is the bunny crossed with a deer and all those things. What would a duck with a cross with an elk be? Somebody tell me in the comments below. What's our duck elk hybrid animal call? <laughs> Welcome on back, everybody. We have finished up the stream. It has been a few days. And the mountains up to here on this side are finished up and way over here on this side, which means we can start working on the iron mine. That's the, I'm thinking we're going to have the cut into the mountain, probably somewhere right in here. Or maybe we kind of terraform this area out and have it going down further into the mining section. But it was really fun coming through here. Thank you everybody so much who came out to the stream and all that stuff. But as I said, it's been a few days since the last time we spoke. I decided to take the weekend off for the holidays and everything and some family was in town. But I've done a little bit more work on bringing some of this cool snow into here. I love these like chasms almost that we have. I think they're called erosion channels. So we have a bunch of these cut out through the mountain all over the place, just bringing the snow all the way from the top way, way down. And I think it's super cool. It breaks up a lot. Still got to cover the rest of this stuff here with snow. But one thing I wanted to show you all as well is I've done a little bit of work here on the texture pack. I'm planning to have it up on the Patreon page later this week, but I've decided to take all of our double slabs. So in this case, you can take where, where can we get them? Where can we get them? Right there. All right. My inventory is still full of all the stone from the stream. But you take one slab like that, right? And then you take two slabs and normally it gives you just the spruce plank. But I decided to rotate those and so they're going vertical now. And I think it gives a great detail bit that we can start adding into to all the walls and everything. Or you can use it as interior walls, which I think would be pretty cool. But that is on every single wood plank type in the game. So if you do double slabs of those through my texture pack now, you're going to be getting that stuff. I've been spending a bit of time working on the front entrance of our new iron mine that we're building up the cave and it's looking pretty good so far but I figured I wanted to fly over here and get some quick inspiration from one that we'd built previously and I thought it'd be kind of cool to check this old build out. This is our old Robin Hood village. It's probably about a year and a half old at this point but I really like it and inside of here we built up a small mine and what I really wanted to look at is how I was doing the wooden aspects of this mine. So you can see it all kind of stepping down here. The floor is very much gravel, coarse dirt, and some cobblestone. And then the walls are very much stone and andesite to give those more of a cleaner look. And this looks like people are dragging things up and down in here. But you can see this one, it gets very, very narrow as we lead towards the end. And then there's some iron at the very end of the mine. I think this aspect is very important because it's like, if you're digging the mine, like why would somebody make a tunnel all the way down here if we have iron, say, scattered in the walls right up here? Why wouldn't they just be digging this stuff out? Why would they go further and further down underground to find that stuff at the very end? Unless you're making like a natural chasm or cave that's just an opening that has a bunch of iron on it. Like this one, they might've depleted everything there, but you, we really got to think about like, how would this function realistically like an actual mine they wouldn't just be leaving iron in the walls up here there'd be a reason to go all the way down to the base i definitely want to make a much bigger and more expansive cave system than what we had in that one because i think this is going to be like our main iron supply area that's not an iron farm i don't want to build an iron farm inside of this one i'm saving that for when we're building up the dwarven area but I think it's some good things to keep in mind while we're doing this one. Well, I planned out the rest of it and we got the area that's going to be cutting straight down right over here and going off in that direction. We might add a few more little points sticking out of there where they maybe tried to probe into the wall and break a few to see if they got lucky. And then this one right here is going very, very high up into the, into the sky of underneath the mountain. And we've got a few more little bits of brain network going all over the place back here, which I think would be really fun to be messing with. I wanted to make this straight one that was kind of the main tunnel all the way back, that big one that we started with. I didn't want that to be our deepest point, so I decided to bring another one down here as well. Next up is the very, very fun part of this whole thing where we need to actually lay this out to a point where it works and we can turn it into a cave. So the rough idea for that one is going to be coming throughout these areas and you can see where I have the cobblestone right now. I'm actually going to be placing blocks on top of the cobblestone so that it, this actually isn't going to be our lowest layer. But to get ourselves started, I need to just kind of plan out how wide roughly the cave is going to be. I want it to be about two to three blocks wide throughout. And then when we get to the very ends, it'll be like some really, really skinny parts because I kind of want to throw a minecart track in 
just because you know minecraft uh that's how we're getting the ores back out but we'll see if i can even like cram one of those in here because i want to use a bunch of slabs and things to make it work that's going to be kind of a if we can do it we'll do it type thing i just wanted to take a quick second here to say thank you so very much for the support on everything recently it has been absolutely killer if y'all are still enjoying these videos please be sure to hit that like button down below and if this is the first one you're checking out and you're enjoying it be sure to hit that subscribe button as well thank you so very much let's get back to it i'm adding in the last few details for our first tunnel here and it's it's starting to come together so you kind of walk down here we've added some gravel and some cobblestone to the base floor so it's not just coarse dirt everywhere anymore honestly can't remember the last time i brought y'all in so if this is all new there's a lot of coarse dirt down here but if not this entire part of the tunnel is now completed as well and i've been bringing in some andesite into our walls here to make it look like people are like mining into it the smooth stone looks a little too smooth to seem like somebody was breaking into it so i like adding in some andesite especially on the corner bits where somebody might have actually like been breaking through this area to open it up i like really adding these things in here to show like what's been broken and where they've been mining and where there might be some scratch marks from the pickaxes hitting the wall and all that stuff and i think it's been pretty good brought in a few wooden pillars throughout here as well and i've actually made the top of this one pretty much mob proof as far as i can see i've thrown a lot of stone slabs up here just to cover the entire thing on top to also stop some light from getting in from this upper side if there's some weird light rays or something they aren't really getting in here and then on top of that it's just mob proof it's great i have been already exploded by creepers skeletons have shot me i've fallen off this thing about 10 times because of mobs and it's been absolutely great but we're getting there first off in this episode we made a mix between a duck and an elk or a deer of some sort and now we have made a stone octopus out in the back the entire thing is now fully finished up i just thought it looked hilarious from this side so i wanted to show it all to you from that pathway that we had talked about before i did actually come through here and place in stone slabs across the entire top portion of this you can see kind of right there so as far as i know this should be mob proof that's not mob proof right there everything else should be mob proof but this is the entire place i think we should now jump around and check out the inside and we need to also throw some iron in there i was down in the mines a little bit and actually found one of our old chests that just had a bunch of junk in it and thankfully there is a bunch of iron ore that we could use this thing is super cool coming throughout this entire place you'll see a lot of narrow spots where it breaks through and a site in the walls everywhere and i think one of my personal favorite parts is this one right here which is just a staircase going all the way up to the top just a wooden platformed area to break up the stone that we have going all throughout this place you'll see i added a bunch of crates and barrels with lanterns on top of them and what i wanted to do back here was find a few places where we could hide a few iron ore in here so it looks like they're trying to like chuck like cut it out of the walls and bring it back home with them so that they can sell or craft up some more tools or whatever it might be they need to have some way to get some iron ore so this is kind of like at the end of the tunnel where they're working towards getting it so i'm doing a few off in that section then coming back down here to the main part of the mines we can continue going down the branches of all these other ways i want to just quickly walk through here before i'll run around and do all the iron stuff but we got a few little spots like that one right there then it comes all the way down here most of the stuff is mob safe on the inside i believe i got the lighting correct in here we got a little guy right down in that way and then this one is just dropping away the heck down here and at this point you actually have to crouch to keep on moving forward because the ceiling is so low and it opens up into kind of this big area where they might be chopping everything out so i think i'm going to throw some iron ore around here very quickly before we jump over into the time lapse i wanted to quickly jump back over here to the statue where we had a sign here previously a lot of people say said some really cool ideas of things we can include but unfortunately none of them fit on the sign and then a bunch of people said remove the sign why would you have a wooden sign in a stone statue and then some other people said we could name the inn instead so here i present to you the broken antler inn i love it i think it's a great name for this one it really ties into the statue here so thank you so very much for everybody who came up with the awesome suggestions there unfortunately i can't remember quite who said this when i read that comment a few days ago it's like yes that is what we have to do but anyways let's jump on over into good old-fashioned time-lapse mode
I hope y'all enjoyed the time lapse of building up our valley here. I decided to stop it at this point because in a few episodes, we're going to be coming and building up a Nordic castle overarching this area. Probably more of a fortress, but I think we'll call it a castle for the sake of adding another castle to our world here. But this video is going to be maybe a little late coming out. Uh, right now, it's uh, very, very late on Monday night, and this video goes out Tuesday morning. And hopefully we got enough here, but I think <laughs> I haven't added up anything, so we'll see where we're at. And I think this hopefully is going to have to do it. But after this point of doing all the time lapse stuff, I came back here and added in this little cart for us here. So we have somebody ready to take some iron down into the city to smelt it all up. Then we added in a few wagons as well and nothing really inside of here. I am, however, going to take this one back here with me. That has been my stone cutter throughout this entire area. And it's made a lot of the terraforming things happen as far as the stone of getting perfect conversions for stone stairs and stone slabs. When you're working on this large of a scale, it's pretty insane. And one other insane thing is, of course, as always on Monday afternoons, we do live stream stuff. And we came throughout here and snowyified this entire upper region. Just let's just get up even higher into there. Come on. All the way up here. All the way. All the way. Look at that. Look at that. It looks so much more magical now that we have snow everywhere. I know a lot of the trees inside these areas I've been forgetting to put the snow layers on top of, but just look at it from over here. Just like this right here. Forget all the little white snowy layers on top of the stone and everything like that for the back mountain. Think of it all being like this in the end. We're going to go through and get rid of all of those by adding some stairs and slabs and everything. And it's just going to be so much more magical. But this area is really really starting to come together and i am so in love with it so i'm glad y'all are enjoying this one as well one other final change i actually came through here and made was i've been wanting to play around with concrete more often and i decided to come through here and throw in some light gray concrete powder into our forge furnace area that we have going on up here and i think it's pretty good i think it's a cool little addition that we have here it makes it feel much lighter and kind of keeps that warmer bit to it as well. And just a little bit more unique than every other walkway that we have throughout this area. We do, however, need to come down here and start doing a lot more terraforming inside this region. But I am running low on supplies to be able to build more trees. And I'm running low on tolerance of building more and more trees. So I think next episode, to get ourselves started, we are actually going to be... Coming out here into the front of the city and finally messing around with what 1.15 has to offer, we're going to be looking into bees. So if anybody has any tips on bees or any bee related farms that we should be looking into as far as maybe automating honey blocks or honeycombs or whatever we want to call them or whatever we want to do with them, I want to throw a meadery in around this area and then we'll do some flower areas around the sides of it to make it a that much more interesting and we'll probably be terraforming of course all everything around this upper area here so if anybody has any suggestions or tips comments concerns with bees or anything that you want me to be sure to check up on please be sure to let me know on that one as well but thank you all so very much for watching i think we're going to be calling it here for today i've got a bunch of stuff i gotta get going and i want to make sure i can get this video out on time to everybody here so please be sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy, it means a heck of a lot to me. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are brand new and enjoying what you're seeing here. Happy holidays, everybody, and I will catch you on the flip side.